What's popular YouTube? Another day, another demo. What's going on, boys? All right, I'm here with my big ass Ukrainian beer. I'm in Kyiv right now. I'm here for the We Play Academy League season two land finals, and I am in a hotel recording. It's been six days since I've been able to put a video up. I'm so sorry, guys. I have been struggling to get this on the road setup. I've got a video on my Twitter right now that shows what I have to work with. But uh, I'm going to let you go and find that, and uh, I'll, I'll, link to, I'll link to it in the comments. But uh, I, I basically got it set up now so that I'm on my laptop, I'm recording, I'm finally good to go on the mobile, and I can do a lot of the backlog demos that I've been meaning to do for the past couple of days. Today is going to be a demo on Exertion from the We Play Academy League. I'll be following up and doing some of those major playoff demos. I've got some ideas to do for them. Of course, we got to do bit. We got to go do Nico. We got to do the MPV, the whole damn thing. Simple. Um, and we just got to do a lot of demos because this is the Diamond Coin Club, okay? In the Diamond Coin Club, we don't take any days off um, unless there are some technical difficulties. But why are we just skipping all the major playoff demos to do a video on this player that you've probably never heard of? Well, in this half, you're going to see because this is the first Lucky or Godlike for some time. And... This guy right here, Exertion, absolutely farmed the hell out of Navi Jr. Yep, that's right. The major grand champs. And as we can already see in the pistol round, you can feel the godlike performance coming. Okay, Exertion, super clean with the shots. He's playing on native in this demo. Completely iced out Navi almost every single round. And while I was casting the games, me and Scrawny are the only casters at the Academy League right now. While I was casting the game, I was thinking, man, he's just racking him up. I, I really want to do a video on him. And from the first season, we did do uh, a couple of videos. One on Monacy and a couple of other players. One on Torzi. But Exertion was somebody that people kept mentioning that I hadn't looked closely at. And now, you know, one of my favorite players to watch in the league has done a fantastic job. Love this little smoke that bounces off into the doorway. We can see the aggression from Exertion coming out as he pushes down Banana on the B side of Ancients. And he's here to take a lot of space. Um, but he's a rifler that people could not get their could not get his name out of their mouth. Every single day he was putting up a performance. People were like, where's the exertion demo? Where's the exertion demo? And this is the next generation of player right here. You know, in exertion. And a lot of these other players in the Academy League. It's been fantastic to watch. And some of you may be wondering, well, what is the Academy League? And the Academy League is uh, a league that has been made by WePlay that a lot of the top orgs have built teams for. And some of these teams have a lot more experience outside of the Academy League. And some of them are just playing in the Academy League and practicing slightly and doing some officials. But Mao's NXT have been winning most of their games. Like in their recent history, like 80 plus percent of their matches, they've been able to win. Um, Torzi is a huge focal point of this team as the opper. And he recently had a, uh, uh, he had a VAC ban five years ago, over five years ago. And just as of a couple of days ago, the VAC ban no longer affects him in becoming a competitive pro player because Valve made it so that if you had a VAC ban from when you were very young, and you, know, you made a mistake, you were fooling around with your friends, playing at an air cafe. As long as you didn't do it, you know, in a Valve sanctioned event, after five years, that VAC ban expires and you're able to compete once again. So now we're in a position where just want to say, you know, shout out to Torzi for being such a fantastic player. Now being able to follow his dreams, thanks to Valve, uh, uh, allowing people to, um, you know, to make mistakes basically when they were younger. Uh, but he's he's kind of the star of the team, the focal point of the team. And then right beside him, the natural comparison that a lot of us have been making at We Play is calling Exertion kind of the electronic of the round. Now, in terms of play style, I mean, you could see some similarities maybe, I guess. It's not really that. It's mostly just about sheer impact, like how much Exertion is doing it around. And you see him doing a lot constantly. Now, this position right here inside of the cave is one where uh, we, we've seen him really make his mark okay shuhi up in the top of the cave is one thing and then exertion around the bottom of the cave towards the b site behind the pillar most typically is where he's gotten so much damn impact and in this game in particular we're going to see some cool ways of playing it and i've got a few rounds that have, that'll come to mind or that uh that yeah that'll come to mind as we see them play out 
where he made a really smart move, he hit some beautiful shots, and of course, with any lucky or godlike, it's going to be a uh, a game with a little bit of everything, right? Uh, some some kills, some nasty spray downs, probably a few eco kills sprinkle in here or there, but also some really strong moves. And yeah, I don't want to spoil it, but I do think that this is going to be a godlike play because he was stealing the show. At least the Observer loved him. You know, the Observer couldn't stop looking at him, so neither could we. Panthera Anka. I want this so bad. I would actually drop... There's not many guns I drop a Silence M4 uh, for in 2021, but the Panthera Anka is one of them. Look at that spray control. Flamey can't even escape to mid. Exertion kills him. Spots one. 5v4 already, and we notice right now, Exertion, he doesn't slow down at all. Remember, we are on land, and I think the pressure got to some players, and for some players, they actually played even better, and you could see uh, in with players like Exertion, who played well online, they played even damn better in a LAN environment, which is exciting to watch. And if you've been watching the league, which you should absolutely do, and if you miss some of the games, you should go back and watch the VODs. The production has been incredible, but more than anything, when we're casting, we're sitting underneath the players, and the players are playing above us. It's really cool. It's kind of like the old nuke catwalk, where you could walk around, and they go and shake hands, and, they, and we can feel... All the players yelling on top of us. And Maus are playing on the opposite side of where we're casting from. And let me tell you, there's nobody that I see standing up more than Exertion. This guy's yelling out. Uh, I don't I don't even know what he's yelling. He's actually yelling at a tone where I can't even describe his emotion. I can't even say if he's yelling out of jubilation or anxiety. You know, like he's just yelling bud-curdling screams that are probably shaking his opponents to the core and uh you're gonna have to go and check the footage to understand what i'm saying it's not safe for work man i'm not posting that on my youtube channel but holy hell is it enjoyable to watch it's very entertaining so what's the move right now he's got teammates behind him but uh not willing to peek down into banana of course they're always running the risk of potentially getting up they can't tell by the profile pictures up top if monacy is one of the players who's left alive but this was the one play that caught my attention first and foremost. Okay, look at Exertion and what he can see from this position. First of all, he's got an off angle staring directly out into the top part of Cave. And as we'll see in a moment, he'll also have a cute little angle to spot players coming up the B ramp. And he will actually get a chance to shoot back. And we didn't see this from his perspective on the stream. So I'm so excited to watch this round in a demo because... I believe he gets smoked out. Maybe it's this round or another. I believe he gets smoked out, and he uses the fact that he's got this small high ground advantage to get some more damage in. And you can see he's spotting here, and it looks like a nerve-wracking situation, but you can tell he doesn't want to give up the space, and I think Exertion absolutely did a great job of uh, knowing when he could take a risk. I think that was a big thing with him. So right there, I believe he actually did get a tag. I remember seeing that player get slowed down, and now, just above the smoke, He's going to line something up. Head Trick tries to dive for the plant. Exertion kills him through the smoke. And they don't even know how it happened. They think, man, this kid is so lucky. Meanwhile, we see from Exertion's POV, he maintained points of reference, right? He had the pillar of the B site. He could see slightly down the ramp. And yes, he was in danger from Cave. But in this particular situation, he decided this is a, a, a risk I'm willing to take. And if they do come Cave again, he has kind of an off angle, right? They could clear him out, crouch slide out wide and try to look for him, but they're not immediately going to aim up to the top of the box. So it's an interesting and weird spot to be in, but a really cool one. So again, here's some basic grenades down the ramp, and wow, Flamey gives him the business. I, I did, That looks even crazier from his perspective than it did from Flamey, so we watched in the uh, match itself. But that's one you can you got to just walk it off, right? I mean, it's, uh, it, it's unlucky, really. It's unlucky, really. Um, the best players in the whole game are coming up banana dry, peeking just like that, and taking shots on their save rounds and on their rifle rounds. One thing that we'll notice, I think maybe I'll do a Nico versus Copenhagen Flames demo. There was a few rounds where Nico would just walk up and, you know, his teammates mobilize behind him with some supportive utility, but for the most part, all he does is get into a spot and, and take a shot onto the site. It's kind of like Banana on Inferno, but when you think about Banana on Ancient, think about it as almost even more overpowered in some sense for the T, because 
Nico will do the same play on Banana on Inferno, where he'll watch the top of it, and then he'll peek into CT, and then whatever. But on on that peak, it's it's it, you know you can get off from a number of angles, and there's likely an opera that's always going to be there. On Ancient, oftentimes it's a rifler holding from the site, like we see. Uh, from exertion from his position or behind the pillar and sometimes you get a pure kind of honest 50 50 duel between two riflers which makes it very tempting to try to do on the t side and we can see some of the zoning utility race can bear he's trying to combine both the nade where it lands and pushing players back into his spray as he sprays through the walls if you want to learn about spams and where to put these spams down then you should watch rain demos he's doing that the best right now and here's a moment where Flamey has a very tucked angle and was super sharp actually in this matchup to be able to get that first kill and also grab a few others. Been the bane of Exertion's existence actually. He's been killing it. He's been the only guy able to kill Exertion more times than he's able to kill them. The only guy positive in the kill matrix right now versus Exertion is big Flame Doggers. It's so weird seeing Flamey in the Academy League. He's, you know, he is kind of like in the second half of his career, maybe in the second third of his career, the third third of his career, but playing in the Academy League after winning nearly 900 grand as a pro CSGO player. But, you know, at first wasn't really taking the Academy League at that seriously, and he was getting mopped up, man. These Academy League players are not sleepers. These guys are playing so damn much. We got Exertion playing on native, all right? This is the future right here. If you can frag like this on native, anything is possible for you. And... Uh, and when Flamey realized that and he started trying more, he turned up a bit. And he also got a little bit of a land boost. Now they qualified to land. He's played a lot better here. Look at these spams from Exertion. This is something you've got to be able... If you want to sign up and get this job as the dedicated cave player for your roster, and you don't know the exact timings of spams in these positions, you should give that job to somebody else. Straight up. So Exertion carefully finds a spot to rotate out to and... That's the other thing, You're, you know, it's almost mind-numbing. The amount of fights that could happen to you at any one moment when you're playing in this position. Someone could come up the ramp uh, one second, the next second someone's peeking cave. There's constant pressure on you. And the entire time, people are spamming wood walls um, all over the place. So you really need to have a really high-impact rifler in this spot because it's not like you get to hold super favored angles all the time and just win. People are trying to play tricks on you to make you take a bad step, and then as soon as you're slightly out of position, you're dead. So finding spots to rotate out the way he did is also, you know, kind of key fundamentals. But there are a number of positions to play in the site, and we'll see him use a lot of them. Something I'm watching pa passively, mentally, when I'm watching the demo is how many positions is somebody playing a site from, right? Will we ever see Exertion play in the pocket if they're not spamming pocket enough? Do we see him playing in the cave in some of the strong angles most of the time? And when you look at a site... Well, hold on. Let's chill for a second. We've got an early exit onto the onto the B site. And Exertion throws a smoke for himself to cover the left side in case anybody crossed. And now he's pushing out. And you can see that he's kind of zoning this fight. If there was one. If there was somebody who lurked up and around in the site. But this is an extra layer of defense where he connects the pillar to the wall. He knows that if someone kills him, they have to do it by spamming blindly. And... He can continuously have this kind of right eye peak as he comes around the smoke and fights anybody who tried to get by him. Now, they're looking to spam his position, but you can see he's really freeing up his teammates to watch a number of things as he sits inside of the pocket. And you can tether off your teammates really well from here. So this is a spot where your player in V, which I'm calling it, I call it V1, sometimes I call it headshot, is... In a spot where uh, if exertion can hear something, it's also a good spot for audio. Remember that too. If you're sitting in a position, think about how much you can hear, right? If somebody makes a mistake, drops a gun, or throws a flash for a teammate or something like that, exertion will get that info. And and here, Shuhi can actually take first contact. Now exertion knows to tuck in this position, and this is a beautiful move right here. He spams, he falls back, but he allows his teammate Torzi to peek out. If he stays tucked the entire time, Torzi might die. But instead, he comes through really quick, but he doesn't commit to the engagement, draws them out in the, into this honeypot that is fighting him inside of the pocket because they see a duel that eventually they'll win because he has no place to fall back to. But it's all because he has his teammate in Torzi that he's trying to bait for, basically. And that is the kind of level three awareness that you need 
if you want to be a truly impactful rifler. So now we have him slinking down. Banana carefully. And this time he won't throw his smoke into the door because, you know, you don't always want it to be a tell. They'll throw it afterwards since he's already established here and they've got significant control and he even dodges a shot after they try to flash and uh, peek him. It looks, looks pretty crazy from the other POV for him to get out of the way so easily. So, and now once again, um, we're doing a lot, right? We're not wasting a ton of time by going the back or back, uh, the long way around to the site. He actually finds his way in the cave. He still has a player over at long who he's not playing bumper cars with, who he'll, you know, give the freedom to do with what he wants. And they won't have to worry about if he came back to cave, do they have to re reclear everything re with grenades? Instead, he gets in here. Um, going the slightly riskier way, but also a really effective way. And now we double up. And again, we've got a, a system where, yeah, he's taking an open engagement, but he also has a teammate who can help him with this kind of cone fire they've got toward the end of, um, of cave. And the smoke is a little bit sketchy. And I don't know if this was slightly on purpose, but there actually might be a world where he could use that to see over top of it. And of course, just catch somebody walking in. But there's another round that just is over before it starts, really, with another very uh, successful play down the ramp with the aggression that continued on. But a lot of smart moves and small details that uh, made it so he wasn't going to get caught off, particularly in that round. You know, simply not throwing the smoke, a small one, but we've seen him a number of times now throw that smoke off the wall into the door before he peeks. But this time, when he wants to go aggressive, he doesn't just uh, launch that smoke. There's some good damage and some good target selection. And, and look at that. He knows where the next fight is going to come from. And listen, at this level of CS, guys, it is just as much about being able to react to your kills as much as it is knowing what your opponents are going to do, right? Y even if you are 80% sure, it's trusting your instincts in moments like that. Your ammo is the most expellable resource that you have. You have so many bullets. If you have a, uh, a chance like that to go for a spray transfer, a wall bang, you should try it if you really think that that fight's going to come. How many times do you wait for an engagement the guy peeks, but because you didn't pre-fire or didn't spam it, didn't have the HP advantage or got pre-fired yourself, you didn't get the kill? Well, there's an example of one where um, his opponent is... He made his opponent wish that he pre-fired because he got shot down in the wood um, before the engagement even really happened. So I love this way that he clears out over the boxes. Now, this is standard, of course. This isn't, this isn't an... This isn't an exertion trademarked maneuver, but uh, to before you wrap the boxes to see over the top of them using the elevation to your benefit, you'll oftentimes be able to see a player's head coming from mid around this area. And it's just good practice to throw that in every once in a while um, when you're when you're uh, trying to clear out the, uh, the boxes or anything in the back lanes outside of B. So again, CT grenades are extremely impressive. Uh, in the early round and you should use them as much as possible to try to reclaim space deny territory make aggressive attacks happen like we're seeing here and again once again slightly new maneuver as we think about going towards spawn but we've also opened up a very interesting angle here as they are down to three players and navi need to make a move and this is kind of an ace in the hole okay so yes exertion could get flanked if Navi are going through spawn and he's trying to divide his attention between watching the ramp and also watching behind him. Now, probably unless he doesn't hear them, he's pretty safe to just watch the flank the whole time, but he might not be that useful. So instead, he's not just spending all his time holding the flank. He's trying to see to make sure that he doesn't miss them walking by if they are going to walk up to B. And now the rotation is over towards the A site via Donut. Exertion laying down some spam to, I, I believe Monacy is to his right, if I if I remember this round correctly. And damn near C is him throwing this, and Monacy will end up taking him out in the round, so no 1v2 possible. But, uh, yeah, that's another example of, okay, you hear that bomb get planted, maybe somebody rotates in through the temple off the bomb plant zone. Why not put some bullets down to see if you can catch some crossing? You'd be surprised how many how many ADRs you get, all right? How, many, how much damage you can do. If you just trust yourself every once in a while. I've talked about this a couple of times, but I think it's very important, right? 
sometimes it's actually hard to say, hard to see for sure, or even know if a player's either pre-fired or got an audio cue or something like that. But a lot of the time, it's just simply game sense, and it's not game sense that's exclusive to being pro or to playing at this level. If you have thousands of hours in Counter Strike. You might have the game sense. You just don't trust the game sense, right? I think that's the difference. You got the feelings, but you're not trusting them. You're not using your third eye, okay? You're only using these two, all right? These two are lame. Everybody uses these two. That's the obvious one. You want to go to the next level? You want to go positive in your next match? You got to use this one, okay? I'm going to poke my eyes out. Exertion going crazy with it. Once again, not dropping that smoke. We heard that was a headshot, actually. And there's another moment. He's holding where the fight will need to come if they want to attack him. This guy has literally 16 HP, but he's making it go miles by simply trusting trusting his options. And also, there's a moment where you're really desperate, right? Like, you, you're going to get blind. What if you don't shoot? What, what do you gain by not shooting in that position? Uh, if you have good crosshair placement, you know that they're about to attack you. You've just got full blind and you're already low on HP. Pull the damn trigger. You know, hold the damn trigger. That's that's pretty much the lesson, and it seems like something that uh, has pervaded this entire half and shows us how we actually get such an advantage over quality players. You know, simple bit electro. There's some good players on the other team. I'm just kidding. It's Navi Junior, but they are really nuts. I mean, they're probably a top three team in the league right now. They are by results as we are. Uh, moving into the final stages of playoffs, big eliminated Navi Junior, Mouse Sports, and NIP, the last three teams. Most solid, close to a real team competi competi competition that I can think of, I would say. Now, Exertion being used as an entry fragger and a mean one at that. Flamey's out of the round. We're here playing anti flash, waiting for the approach. You can see immediately off the radar how he's playing off of his teammates. Ready to swing, but giving his teammates space. JDC gets the job done, and Exertion comes in right afterwards. Insane stuff. Tedrick's down. It's so clean for him. I think we're on something like 2.2 sensitivity at 400. I'll go ahead and look at the st uh, the settings page. I shot him a message to ask because I saw some Russian stats a settings website that said he was on 1280 by 960. I was like, oh, you know, the simple res. He run he won a major on this res. That's a good res. But there's just nothing like 1920 by 1080, isn't there, guys? I messaged him. He said, I've been playing on full HD for seven years. Seven years, boys. It's time to make the switch. All right. A couple of potential final engagements and exertion. Very careful about the way that he, he comes up into uh, the B site. You can see that flash goes over the box so that he can swing with it. It doesn't blind him. And uh, he doesn't overextend on that duel. And sometimes that in, it, in and of itself is a mind game. If you're fighting somebody who they know you will swing eventually, sometimes it works really well to just simply not swing. And they get uncomfortable knowing that someone could come up on their other side. And then they end up swinging up for you. And you get the kill. So he holds his nerve. 1 HP. Go to spam 1 in the chat for that. Off to 14. Two-way player, this exertion. Looking super good on the CT side as well as the T side. Copy and paste those flashes. So you know how to have an effective side exec. Something to always pay attention to when you're watching teams play. I particularly like looking at the nades that people throw while they're running. That's a good sign. And listen, the demos do the work for you, okay? You can go and double check the demos to make sure the flashes are good. But most of the time, you don't have to. I mean, you can, you can eyeball where it's going to be. Especially these running flashes that aren't set. You're trying to hit a specific area. Ah, it's bad advice. You should go ahead and check all the flashes, actually. Listen, if you've got better players than you on the team, don't throw any flashes. Can I give you that advice? It's actually great advice. There's nothing wor only worse than throwing uh, the not throwing flashes is throwing bad flashes. Okay? If you can't throw a flash, just keep your f keep your flashes. Drop. You can drop your flashes to somebody else. Stop wasting your flashes, guys. Your flashes suck. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. And has it been godlike? I mean, screw the counter, okay? It's been godlike. It's been godlike. We've seen some insane stuff, some great maneuvers. Uh, what'll be the final approach? From the T side, just quickly, since we're here. What we need to remember is if you're at work on the default, there's so much room to come through with spams, to go through with smoke spams, to work on cave control slowly by either mollying the left side or the right side. 
putting pressure. Sometimes throwing a flash will just help you um, get a get an audio cue for a footstep to see if somebody's there or not. And in this particular situation, you're gambling sometimes. Sometimes it's off a demo. It's off a tendency. Do the players like playing on the left or the right? There are different there's different protocols and also uh, different reasons why you want to play on the left or the right. Uh, in this situation, of course, they're mollying the right. But they win themselves cave control. And what does that mean? That means that now they've kind of opened up the map. If they've, if you feel like you've scared your opponents enough, you could cut silence for a bit. And if you've conditioned properly and they're used to you waiting for a long period of time or faking an approach and then actually committing, then you buy yourself the opportunity to do this and potentially take open sights. So we'll see what will happen. Exertion shoots a bullet there so that they look in his direction while that flash pops. That's something you'll see people doing with their own flashes. Sometimes it doesn't do anything, but it only costs you one bullet. And one bullet is is free. It actually comes with a gun. Uh, unlike, you know, uh, an, uh, an iPhone charger with an iPhone in the box or a 1.6 AK. In CSGO, you get the bullets for free, okay? You get the gun and all the extras. So why not use the ammo? Why not use the ammo? That's my only question for you. One player remaining. They try to come through the double swing. You could hear that. You can feel a communication there. Someone takes leadership. Maybe JDC since he's first to peak. And the round is over and the game is done. And that is exertion. And I know, dude, if you're watching this game, you're thinking, what is the difference between these players and tier one players? Look how they were moving. Like all their setups were really great. And uh, their aim was insane and all that stuff. And the, and the truth is that it's not if you put a better team versus them, they're going to find the gaps. They're going to have slightly better individuals as well. But you will have the odd case, uh, you know, Gambit youngsters becoming Gambit or, you know, these academy teams climbing the ranks. And right now uh, it looks like Miles NXT are, are that next team to get bigger. And I don't want to blow anyone's ego up because it's very important that you continue to work hard because it is not easy to get into the top 30 is not easy to get into the top 20 and it is even harder to stay there. Okay. You can peek in there, but staying there is a whole different beast. So the last huge come up story, of course, Copening of flames and entropic even, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's tough once people start respecting you and then, you know, your weaknesses get exploited, but we've seen some really, really great stuff out of mouse NXT for the meantime. And love these guys. They're super fun to watch on land. I really hope you, I'm sh this video might come up after, the Academy League finals are done, but there will be more seasons. And I recommend you go back and watch the VODs because the production is absolutely fantastic. So shake it off the rust here with uh, another demo review. I'm super worried that the audio levels or video is going to be messed up. I know I'm a little bit orange. I don't have the best lighting possible, but I'm just glad to be able to record demos again. Lots more to come. Hope you enjoyed that. And as always, be safe. I'll see you in the next one.